But to kick off the Magical Readathon, I am going to be bringing you guys the next installment in my unhaul project. Oh my god, this is just a disaster. The main character is just insufferable. This is risky announcing this or saying this here. My July Loom crate just arrived. <laughs> Hello everybody, today is the first day of August, the first day of the Magical Readathon, and also the first day of this brand new reading vlog. So my TBR in August and everything in August for me is surrounding the Magical Readathon, which is my favourite readathon of all time, created by the wonderful G over at Book Roast, of course. So I will pop a link to the announcement video for that down in my description box in case you guys want to check it out and want more information, because obviously I'm not going to be getting into the nitty gritty of that at the beginning of every single vlog this month. I will pretty much just be telling you like what I'm reading for what prompt. But to kick off the Magical Readathon, I am going to be bringing you guys the next installment in my unhaul project. So if you guys don't know what that is, I think think at some point last year, I don't know whether it was early last year or around the midpoint, I collected together a group of books that were on my shelves that had either like been there for ages, were ones that I was only like moderately interested in, or were ones that were kind of outside my comfort zone and they're the kind of things that I do want to read, they do seem interesting to me, but for whatever reason I don't think that I'm going to want to keep hold of them after I finish them. So it might be that I've loved a book from a certain author before and I have more books by them, but the synopsis of those ones don't seem is interesting to me. It could be to do with the genre, so thrillers and mysteries, I really enjoy reading them for the entertainment value, but once like the mystery is solved and I know what happens, I often don't see the point in myself personally rereading them, therefore I don't keep them. So from time to time I dedicate around a week to reading through a handful of books that I've set aside and put on my unhaul cart to just make sure that I am progressing through them and eventually clearing them out. And this is also a test of like how well I know my own reading tastes. Like these books that I've set aside that I don't think are gonna be necessarily five star reads, although in the case of like some of the thrillers and stuff, they might be, I just might not wanna reread them. Um, but am I right in thinking that these books are going to be like enjoyable in the moment, but not something that I think about after I finished and not something that I wanna hold on to for forever. So in terms of the Magical Readathon, I have set aside one block of prompts for this unhaul project. So my career is demonologist and the most challenging subject that I have to study is demonology, which makes sense, you know. I have to read three books to get the required grade for my career. So the first thing I'm gonna be studying is imprangling and the prompt for that is super broad. It is to read a fantasy. So when I did my 2022 round of these books will self-destruct in 12 months, which once again are books that I've kind of decided if I haven't read these in 12 months, months then there's no point me keeping them. They're the kind of things that never make it onto a TBR because they're not the ones that I immediately grab for. So if at the end of the 12 month period I still haven't read them they need unhauling. And in my 2022 round, I pretty much did all subscription box books that were the ones that like sounded mildly interesting to me, but not something I gravitate towards. So I've decided to pick one of those, which is The Bright and the Pale by Jessica Rubinkowski. This one was a fairy loot book and it is a stunning edition. It has reverse dust jacket art and a little bit of foiling under the cover as well. But this one is about a girl whose family and village was encased in ice on this mountain. And she was pretty much like the only survivor when this happened and she ended up joining a thieves guild where she became best friends with this guy who was then murdered. However, then she finds out that he is actually alive and to, I think to find him, she has to take people on an expedition to the village where she's from, where all of her family are encased in the ice. So I, it just seems like generic kind of YA fantasy vibes to me, nothing stands out about this book to me, but I do actually think it's gonna be a really quick read. And it is also Polathon this month, hosted by Jade from JJ Reads. And this is like my one honorary polar fantasy. Now I know that the point of Polathon is to just like raise awareness for the polar bears essentially and donate if you are able. So just read whatever you want and there's prompts like if you want them. And I'm definitely going to be contributing in terms of like the amount that I'm reading throughout the month. But in terms of like actually fulfilling the prompt and actually reading polar fantasy, this is the only contribution that you're gonna get from me. I have actually started it but I didn't. I'm gonna get a bookmark now actually because I have Magical Readathon bookmark set. I'll use my guild one which is the Mindwalker one. I started it to be honest, I started it last night, which technically is an illegal move. But I knew that I wasn't going to read very much after I finished my last read of July. So I didn't want to start something. And I just wanted something to read a couple of chapters of before bed. So I'm actually just like halfway through 
chapter two, literally on page 16. So it pretty much doesn't matter that I started it last night. And this one is only, it's, I thought it was at least 400 pages when I picked it, but it's actually only 328. So hopefully this one won't take me very long. And I'm excited. My TBR for this month is really manageable. And after last week and what I did for last week's vlog and last week's vlog challenge, I'm in a really good reading mood. So I'm feeling real optimistic about this month as well. heading for a workout pretty shortly oh my god this is just a disaster I say I'm gonna be working out pretty soon I've just got changed to work out it is 8 30 and I still need to walk Brie do the dishes do some reading and apparently I'm working out which also means I'll be showering so I don't know how true that statement was but I had I just had one of those days you know where I just my patience was pretty much non-existent and I filmed two videos today one of which I was editing to go live today and trying to do that and also look after Brie at the same time when she's still very much a puppy was just really trying my patience so I actually received an Amazon parcel earlier and I was just not in the mood to be on camera. We'll open it now this is probably from Ash I feel. A gift from Kisses Ash. I'm very sorry you beautiful creature this is not the US flop flop paperback. Yes, picture me doing flop flop with my arm, haha, <laughs> from Kisses Ash. Oh my god. Good news though, Ash, it is still pretty floppy. Like, it's not the most tightly bound UK paperback that I've ever encountered. But this is Ashes of the Sun by Django Wexler, which I believe is a book that Mel told Ash to read, and Ash is also really enjoying it. Oh, also, it has your name in Ash. Well, I could smell burning, but I've just blown out a candle, it's fine. But this is an adult fantasy story. I think Mel said that it is pretty fast paced, but it's really good because she knows that I don't love fast paced things. But the synopsis says 400 years ago, a cataclysmic war cracked the world open. Amid the ashes, the Dawn Republic now stands guard over lands listed with eldritch relics and cursed by plague spawn outbreaks. But a new conflict is looming and brother and sister Gaia and Maya have found themselves on opposite sides of it. At the age of five, Maya was taken by the Twilight Order and trained to be a centaur, wielding forbidden arcana to enforce the Dawn Republic's rule. On that day, her brother Gaia swore to destroy the order that stole his sister, whatever the cost. 12 years later, brother and sister are two very different people. She is the Twilight Order's brightest prodigy. He is a thief, bandit, and revolutionary. Together, the siblings will discover that not even ties of blood will keep them from splitting the world in two. Definitely sounds interesting. This brother and sister on opposite sides going against each other is definitely something that I can get behind. I'm wondering, I'm assuming that it is going to be multi-perspective and that you're not just following one of them, which by the looks of it, yes, you're following both of their perspectives. So I'm interested to see which one of them I'm going to be rooting for. And thank you so much to Ash for sending this my way. So in terms of my reading, it's actually going quite well. I was doing some illustration work last night. I was making a logo for something and I put the audiobook on for The Bright and the Pale because over pretty much this week and a little bit of the weekend, my anxiety has been through the roof again. And after two weeks of feeling really good, honestly, it sucks. But essentially, if I was reading this physically with my eyes or reading anything physically with my eyes, I knew that it was going to be a struggle for me to be able to focus and to like continue reading and not panic would have just been really challenging. So I put the audio on for this and the narrator, I have checked, it's not the narrator of the selection series, but she definitely sounds a lot like her. And it's a fine audio narration for a fine book. This is pretty much as I expected it to be, the most generic, generic YA that I've ever read. It is about this girl who had a best friend. She worked for the Thieves Guild um, after her family had been frozen in ice on this mountain. And her best friend was taken from her and murdered. She meets him again. Lo and behold, she's in love with him, but he can't ever know because it would ruin their friendship. And her bargain for being able to see him again after she found out that he wasn't dead was to take this group of people to the mountain where her family are encased in ice because there is a very valuable substance called loveite that is mined in that mountain and when you mix it with I think iron it makes something that is impenetrable and like indestructible which is why people want it. So yeah it's perfectly fine it's perfectly all right which is pretty much what I expected from it which is why it was on the unhaul cart but yeah it's a decent listening experience and I have I'm on page 172 so I have 150 pages left which I think is about two hours of the audio so this is not my phone that is 
um, my brow palette, but I think I'm going to put the audio on while I do the dishes. Maybe while I walk the dog, although I think I'm going with Curtis, so maybe not. And um, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that I can actually finish that off tonight. Hello, so I have been withholding information from you guys pretty much because I have absolutely nothing to say. Yesterday morning, so quite a while ago now, I finished The Bright and the Pale by Jessica Rubinkowski. It was fine. I gave it two stars. I don't even have anything to say about this. It was fine, like completely and utterly fine. There wasn't anything that I particularly enjoyed about it, but there's nothing that I particularly hated about it. It got a little bit tedious to listen to just because I felt like I knew what every plot point in this story was going to be because I've read this story at least like 30 times before and every single trope that was in here that had been done before also just played out in exactly the same way. It wasn't just that I've read this story before, it's that I've read this exact story with these exact characters and these exact tropes before. It had a lot of shadow and bone in it, it had a lot of truth which in it though a lot less complex and the only thing that I could really like positively say about it is that I thought it was kind of cool that the bright and the pale are these two gods that are always at war with each other and they each have their own champions. So yeah, I finished that, it was two stars. I'm glad that I can unhaul this with a clear conscience and not spend any of the rest of my life wondering what if I'd have read this book. I did read it and it was fine. So that is my first Prompt for Magical readathon done, which was, I think, in Pranglin. And the prompt for that one was to read a fantasy. So my next prompt, I have already started it, although I haven't actually read very much between yesterday morning and now. But the next prompt to achieve the qualified status is Caro, Demon of Chaos. Use a random number generator for your TBR books. And if you guys watch my August TBR, you will know that I did that in that video. And the book that I selected was Start of Attempt by David Nichols. I actually could do with putting a bookmark in this because then I'll actually know where I'm up to but I'm on page 45 so like I said I haven't read very much and this one is a coming of age story about this boy in 1985 who's 19 I think and he is going to university his father died when he was younger and he remembers that he used to watch university challenge with his dad and he comes from a working class family so that kind of lifestyle this level of knowledge like higher education is not something that would ever have been attainable to his family previously also I'm sure I have something in my eye so I'm sorry for the fact that I keep rubbing it but our main character Brian goes to like a decent university it's not Oxford or Cambridge but like it's a it's a red brick essentially and he ends up joining the university challenge team to get close to this girl that he likes essentially it's written in like a very conversational tone um one of my favorite books ever is by David Nichols which is One Day I adore that book so much I can already tell that I'm not gonna love this one to the degree that I'm gonna love One Day and if I don't end up enjoying this one I'm actually going to unhaul my other or one of my other David Nichols books that I haven't read which is The Understudy. However I do also have Us which seems to be more along the lines of One Day so I will be keeping hold of that one. But yeah I'm only 45 pages into it so I can't say too much about it so far. I do enjoy David Nichols writing style to a point but it's very like personal. It's first person and it the narrative is very much dependent on the main character and so far I'm not really gelling with the main character of this which like a 19 year old boy in 1985 he was gonna get on my nerves a little bit let's be real. I've seen the movie to this though and I do really enjoy it which is why I don't mind reading the book and why I'm kind of interested in the book but I don't foresee this being on the, at the same level as one day for me at all. So I actually have a friend coming around tonight. My best friend Ryan is coming to visit. He should be here within the next 30 minutes actually. It's like 6 p.m. So we're not actually going to be doing much. We're probably just going to be playing the Game of Thrones living card game if I'm being honest and he's mainly coming here because he hasn't met Brie yet and then tomorrow morning we're actually going to be going to my dad's so that he can see my dad's pups because he hasn't met them yet either. So as that is my plan for the next two days I probably won't get much reading done although I may get a little bit done tomorrow night after Ryan has gone home but yeah I'm looking forward to spending time with my friend. We haven't had much time together recently that isn't like meeting up in a random city and like doing an activity so I'm really excited actually. Good morning. I don't want to read this book. <laughs> So we're going to be picking another one. The main character is just insufferable and I remember actually from the film 
he was actually pretty irritating in that as well. So just his voice in here is so obnoxious in the way that I imagine, I can't say because I'm a woman, I imagine it's even worse for men, but in the way that all 18 year olds and 19 year olds are kind of so sure of themselves. Cause like, I feel like you grow up and you establish a role within your community and then you go to university and you think that you're hot shit and then you get there and you realize that the world is so much wider than you ever thought it was. And that kind of throws you through a loop. So this guy is going to university thinking that he's like, a big deal and he's so full of hope about what university will be and obviously it's not going to turn out to be everything that he hopes it's not going to make him into this like elite individual it's just gonna like you know give him an education he'll still be the same kind of guy so um yeah he's just insufferable and i i like the movie i don't need to read this and so i am also going to oh Am I going to unhaul the understudy as well? I might leave that one for just a little bit longer because this one is about a play. So I think it might be a little bit more because especially just because I know how this plays out. I know that he's not really going to get it any better because he's the whole point of this in a way is that he's kind of like out of touch with reality and a little bit insufferable at this stage in his life. And also it's perfectly normal and people tend to be like this at this stage in their life. Honestly, like teenagers are the worst. And I say that um, not thinking about teenagers that exist in life now but thinking about myself <laughs> as a teenager and like the perspective that I lacked and how I'm just like so much better now. So we are going to pick a new one. The awkward thing about this and the reason why I really don't want to DNF at this prompt is that I don't have any control over what book I read next. So it could like the book that comes up could be even worse than start of a 10. So we're gonna get a random number generator. As we are still doing the unhold project, I will still be picking a book off the cart. There are 43 books in total. And can you guys actually see this? Oh my god you can. I can't though. Generate 21. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, oh, 21. I feel like this is more dense than I want right now, but we'll go with it. I've kind of been really slow since I finished The Bright and the Pale, so I was hoping for something that was going to be a little bit faster paced. But we've got The Power by Naomi Alderman. This one is technically a sci-fi, but also like, I, I guess it's like a literary sci-fi. And this is about a society in which women have all of the power. And I think they suddenly develop the powers to like electrocute people and men don't have any power. So like the gender roles in society switches around. I've heard really good things about this in terms of it being a really good book but I just I feel like I need to be in more of a mood to read this one can I have another pick and choose between them is that allowed I'm just I'm in a real fussy mood at the minute so I feel like this is just not gonna work out for me at all 37 oh god that's really far around 21 was the power 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30, there is one behind there, so that's 31. 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. Oh, why are they all so close to David Nichols' books? This one is Other Words for Smoke by Sarah Maria Griffin. So this one I think is fabulism. It says, the house at the end of the lane burned down and Rita Frost and her teenage ward Bevan were never seen again. Times people never learned what happened, only May and her brother Rossa know the truth. They spent two summers with Rita and Bevan, two of the strangest summers of their lives. Because nothing in that house was as it seemed. A cat who was more than a cat and a dark power called Sweet James that lurked behind the wallpaper, enthralling Bevan with whispers of neon magic and escape. And in the summer heat, May became equally as enthralled with Bevan. Desperately in the grips of first love she'd give the other girl anything a dangerous offer when all that sweet james desired was a taste of new flesh you know what i'm actually gonna go for this one i'm not a big fan of fabulism which is why it's in here sometimes it's just a little bit weird for me and fabulism tends to be illogical by nature which i really like my mystical and magical happenings to be like rooted in some sort of like logic or magic system so we'll see how it goes but it sounds kind of eerie i didn't realize as well that it has like an o in the background. I feel like I'm more in the mood of this one. I don't know, have I just cheated? I don't know. I, I did the thing twice and I just picked the most preferable one. So we're going with other words for smoke. Don't wanna see you walk away now. I just think that you should stay a while. Cause I can't help but feel that you're the one. I shouldn't let it go. The way you look into my eyes, I can't believe this happened so.
Otherwise for Smoke is a success. Throughout the first like 50 years pages of it, I wasn't sure like it wasn't super gripping my attention. But as I started to approach like the 100 to halfway point in this, it got increasingly more interesting. So this is about twins whose parents are not going through a good time so like it's very much alluded to rather than explained throughout the majority of this book but essentially their parents are on the brink of divorce and they drop the twins who are 14 off at their aunt Rita's or their great aunt Rita's so they can like go on holiday but they're actually like I guess trying to talk through saving their marriage so the twins stay with their aunt Rita who is also looking after a girl called Bevan whose mother used to live with Rita but abandoned her daughter and kind of moved away do you know the classic like oh I'll come back for you at some point like I gotta go do something and then just like never returns. So they're all living in this house over the summer and Rita is actually a witch. She's also been teaching Bevan some like psychic ability and also tarot readings and so she starts to also teach one of the twins May. But there's also something very mysterious going on with this house. Like Rita alludes to a lost love that she had. She now lives not alone obviously because she lives with Bevan but she has no children, she has no partner and she alludes to this lost love that she had when she was much younger. Also a little bit about some friends that she used to have that don't seem to be around anymore and there is an owl that lives in the walls of one of the rooms and it is very clear like it's very unsettling and it's clear that this is kind of like a malevolent spirit and Rita along with the talking cat Bobby is actually keeping the spirit at bay however it does actually have Bevan under its thrall so this is actually also sectioned the first section is about the summer that the twins first visit this house then we also have um a second section that is called vignettes from other summers which is about a couple of summers that follow this one and also some that happened like way in the past and then it goes into a section called the second summer where the twins are a little bit older and they once again visit Rita's so it really started to hook my interest as we started to get to these other parts because that wasn't what I expected from this I expected it to play out like a normal story throughout this one summer but we actually have some time passing in here and I'm actually really enjoying the way that it links to the past and to Rita's past who honestly is probably along with the talking cat Bobby my favorite character in this book. It also is a little bit more grounded than I would say a lot of fabulism is which is why I'm actually like doing all right with it and all of the like odd stuff that's going on does seem to be hinging on like a particular event. It's definitely not like a favorite but I'm way more into this than I thought I was going to be so my original plan was to actually finish it this afternoon and I also brought my camera downstairs to film this update before I did go ahead and finish it but Curtis was watching football and I actually fell asleep and had a little bit of an afternoon nap for a couple of hours so I'm currently on page 221 so I only have about 80 pages left and it is currently at five past seven I'm about to work out probably walk the dog and then get in the shower and I think I'm supposed to be playing a little bit of Fortnite tonight with the boys but alongside that I would also like to finish this so that I can stay on track for my vlog schedule because ideally I want this vlog finished today because I do have like very like segmented plans throughout August to get everything done and read in time I guess but I guess we can it's okay if I extend it by a couple of days so when we finish this we can move on to the final book of this vlog which is actually not all that big. Hey yo happy Monday. I am on a mission this week because I'm actually planning this is risky announcing this or saying this here because you're gonna see this video in three days I think if all goes to plan but I'm on a mission this week because I'm planning on announcing the September Bookoplathon in six days but I don't have a board <laughs> so um I need to pack orders which I've done I don't know if you guys can see there is a stack of orders there behind me that I've done this morning um and then I also need to edit this vlog which I'm going to sort out up to date now and then the rest of the week I have to make a board make everything that goes with the board including the guide we also have a couple of bits of merch that are in their final stages and have all of that ready in six days so that is my plan for the week and I'm actually feeling not stressed about it but not kind of like in a good way in a like I just I just have faith that I'm gonna pull it together but I don't seem I need to light a fire under my ass essentially but I have also finished Other Words for Smoke by Sarah Maria Griffin I liked this more than I thought I was going to I gave it three stars but I think I liked it more than I thought I was going to because it's not fabulism it's like a fantasy horror blend I want to say I would say that the horror elements are light or that it's more of a atmospheric horror than anything actually scary there's like this insidious creepy atmosphere that permeates this house where Rita lives and I feel like it, it's kind of it's shifting and it's unsettling and it never actually scared me but it definitely has like the atmosphere of 
something pretty horrific. While I did really enjoy this, it's pretty much three stars because I was just kind of along for the ride with this book. And while it does definitely have a plot, there were elements of characters in here that like didn't necessarily, they weren't like crucial parts of the the plot I guess like the twins in here they're there and they're along for the ride pretty much as I was as a reader but they're not especially crucial to anything that's happening they're just kind of like witnesses to it this as well I thought that this was YA I would actually say that it's adult not that there's anything in it that's really not appropriate for a young adult audience it's just a lot of the underlying themes of this do fall into YA a little bit because a lot of this is about love and fear but there is definitely like the core of this novel and the core of the problems in here is how oppressive religion is and this book is set in Ireland so a lot of this is about Irish women and how they've had to suffer because of Catholicism. There is also a lot of like homophobia at the root of this and also just generally controlling women. You know like teenage pregnancies that kind of stuff. But yeah I enjoyed this a lot more than I thought I was going to. Still gonna unhaul it because it is a standalone that I will never reread again but it was a more enjoyable experience than I thought it was going to be. So that is the random number generator prompt <laughs> For magical readathon finally done and now i'm going to be moving on to my final prompt but i um i need to tell you what that is so i'm just going to go grab the sheet so the final prompt that i need to complete studying demonology is for the distinguished level and it is banishing spells 101 a book that's at risk of being unhauled and i'm thinking now that i might change it because this can be anything on the unhaul card, this was the reason why I made demonology into this vlog because the last prompt is a book that's at risk of being unhauled, so anything on the card. And I actually have picked out Hold About the Tide by Melinda Salisbury, which oh, it's a horror and I am interested in reading it, but, but I'm wondering if I should swap this out because I'm already behind schedule where I wanna be. And with, like I said, being so last minute <laughs> with getting the book off with on together, I do actually foresee myself spending a couple of evenings working this week which gives me less time. I'm gonna go see what's on the car and we'll see if we are gonna go with this one. Okay yeah we are swapping this one out because on the unhaul car I actually have one comic which I've had for a while and I'm just never gonna pick this up of my own volition which is why like I normally wouldn't put something like a comic on the unhaul car but this isn't one that I bought or was interested in. This actually came as an additional book in an owl crate and that is Witchy by Ariel Sla Slame. I always I don't know how to pronounce her name. Ariel Slamé Rees? Slamet Rise? Ariel Slamé Rees is now how I normally pronounce it, but I, I just feel like that isn't right. But this one is a young adult fantasy comic about a girl who lives in a world where the length of your hair determines the strength of your magic. So if you are strong enough and if your hair is long enough, you get conscripted into the witch guard. But if your hair is too long, then you are branded a witch and annihilated. So I really like the cover of this, but I don't like the art style actually inside the comic itself. And I am quite picky about art styles. It's just like, I don't know, it's just a personal preference and I have to really like the art to be able to read a comic. And this one is just kind of, I think it's her round and like cartoon-esque it is that I'm not a fan of. It is volume one as well, so it's not a finished story arc, um, but for a comic, it is pretty big. It is 253 pages, but with it being a comic, it shouldn't take me too long to read. So we're going with this one. I'm gonna go and do some editing on this vlog. And then if I have any time this afternoon, I should be making <laughs> a base for a Bogopoly board, but instead I will probably get some reading done. My July Loom crate just arrived. So I thought I would unbox it here for you guys because it was delayed, but in a way that like it was just mine that was delayed. Everybody else got theirs, um, I think it was a couple of weeks ago now. Obviously my unboxing video has been and gone, so I will just quickly show you guys the July Loom Crate. I don't typically put my unboxings in vlogs as you guys obviously know, because I know some people don't like it, but um, it, it's just a one-off, so I'm sure you can forgive me. But this was sent to me by the team over at Illumicrate to show to you guys, so thank you so much to the Illumicrate team for that. Illumicrate is a monthly science fiction and fantasy subscription box. You get a brand new hardback release, sometimes it's YA, sometimes it's adult, and a selection of bookish goodies. I do have a discount code as well if you want to sign up to Illumicrate yourself at any point. You can use my code BETTA5 and that will get you a discount on a three or six month subscription. I actually have no recollection of the theme or the book for this month anymore. But the theme for this month is In Too Deep. 
And here are the spoilers in case you guys would like to pause here and have a little look. August's theme is of course knowledge is power and we all know that the book of the month is going to be Babble by R.F. Kong. But I have no idea what this one is so I'm really, I haven't been spoiled for it either which I feel like is a miracle at this point. So first up we have this which obviously looks like either a blanket or maybe a towel looking at the fabric of it. Could this be a beach towel? It would be fitting for the season. It says Beneath the Waves and it's inspired by the Folk of the Air series by Holly Black, which is of course Cruel Prince. I'm not a fan of Holly Black myself, but I can always appreciate a towel, which I believe this is with quite a pretty design on it. Oh yeah, actually I really, really like the pattern and it doesn't matter that it is inspired by the Cruel Prince because quite honestly, you cannot tell. You also have this little wooden tube that says property of the night spire and it is okay that is cool it is a bamboo toothbrush with a little case so obviously like if you want to travel with it you can put it in it, it looks really cool because it looks like a little map pro for a pirate ship we also have a vel oh, these metal straws just got metal straws in fairy loot and i said you can never have too many metal straws and i still stand by that oh these are ombre i like these they also have text on the Ends. see if I can line that up for you so that you guys can actually I'm not sure if you can read those but from top to bottom they say winged serpent golden eagle water strider and carrion crow and they are inspired by black sun which I think is Rebecca Roanhorse if I remember correctly I think that this is a water bottle which yes it matches the other aluminum crate water bottle as well although oh I prefer this design because I really like the colors this says read a thousand books and your words will flow like a river. I always, always love a water bottle. They always come in handy. Even for things like I actually just accidentally cracked open a plastic milk bottle last night. So um, I got the other one of these out of the cupboard to store some of the milk in. But we're up to the book of the month now, which I still have no idea what this is. So I'm really intrigued to find out. It is very blue and it is The Drowned Woods by Emily Lloyd Jones, who is the author of, is it the Welsh one, The Bone Houses? Yeah. Yes, it's like right behind the camera. Um, oh, we have like a wave pattern on the sprayed edges here. And the back of this says, oceans will rise, a kingdom will fall. Now, I'm pretty sure that this is gonna be an exclusive cover. So as usual, I will overlay the original cover over the top. And I'm also going to have a look myself. Okay, yeah, so this is very different. The original cover actually matches the color scheme that's on the spoiler card. This one is blue. I actually prefer the blue because I feel like the pink is very fairy tale esque And with it being called the drowned woods i feel like this is a better color palette but obviously i haven't read the book so i can't say for sure this is also of course signed by the author and oh we have some real pretty foiling on the naked hardcover and some under dust jacket art which is really pretty i love the style of this actually so as for the synopsis so this says once upon a time the kingdoms of wales were rife with magic and conflict an 18 year old merit is well acquainted with both as the last living water diviner, she can manipulate water with magic, the unique elemental power many would kill to possess. For years, Mare has been running from the prince who bound her into his service and forced her to kill thousands with her magic. Now, all Mare truly wants is a safe, quiet life far from power and politics. But then Mare's old handler, the king's spy master, returns with a proposition, use her powers to bring down the very prince that abused them both. With the help of a fake cursed man, a snarky thief and a corgi that may or may not be a spy, Mare must decide if she's prepared to run for the rest of her life or to stand a fight for her freedom and peace. Part heist, part dark fairy tale, and rich with Welsh legends, The Drowned Woods is an ethereal fantasy perfect for fans of Kristen Kishaw and Maria V. Schneider. It sounds interesting, the only thing that puts me off is that I know with The Bone Houses, which was also Welsh, the thing that Emily Lloyd-Jones herself is, yeah, she's American, she's from Oregon, and I know a Welsh booktuber who is Rhiannon from The Welsh Reader read The Bone Houses, and I'm pretty sure she said that the Welsh was bad in it, which isn't what you want if you're writing pretty much exclusively Welsh stuff. Stories. But I actually, I really like the theming of this box. My favorite items, obviously, going to be the straw. The towel will come in handy. It is quite a thin one, so I will probably use it as like a beach towel and if not like a dog towel, which is fine. So yeah, a pretty decent box from Illumicrate and I'm really excited for the next one because I believe that Babel is coming in a slipcase, which is going to be stunning. Plot twist. I finished Witchy by Ariel Slamiris, who is Danish, which is why I'm struggling with the pronunciation of her name. I should um, check that out, actually. Yeah, no, I can't find it easily, 
but um, I finished this and I really, really enjoyed it to the point where I've looked up volume two and there is only a volume two, so I don't know whether this is unfinished or whether it was intended to finish at volume two. Hello, just popping in real quick to say that I have just done some very basic googling on witchy and it is actually a webcomic series that is still ongoing it's just obviously that the bind ups are taking longer because it is a webcomic so likelihood is providing that i enjoy volume two i will end up getting myself a physical copy of that and then collecting this because i did really enjoy it volume two is slightly shorter than this this one's 260 pages and volume two is 185 but it's also available on kindle unlimited so i might actually knock that out really soon i might even knock it out in between vlogs you know and then just talk about it in my wrap-up because I enjoyed this so much more than I expected to. In this one we are following a young girl called Nynaeve and in this world yes as I said before your magical strength is determined by the length of your hair but if it's too long then you will be burned as a witch. I don't understand the distinction because there's some guys like the leader of this civilization has really really long hair that's like almost touching the floor whereas Nynaeve's father who's murdered right at the beginning of this comic has hair that goes down to probably probably like doesn't even quite reach his thighs yet he was burned for witchcraft so I don't understand like where the line is but Nynaeve is essentially silently rebelling against this society by charming her hair to look shorter than it is because she does actually have really long hair. However the day arrives when they're doing the conscription games for the witch guard and Nynaeve is discovered and conscripted into the army. This is against everything that she wants especially because of what happened to her father so in a very emotional state she actually cuts all of her hair off which sends her on the run because that is an act of treason. I actually ended up really liking the art style. I mean I don't love it but it fit the story and I really liked it in that regard. I really like the colour work in here. I really like that the dialogue and the oh Brian Curtis are back from their walk. Hello baby where have you been? Where have you been? I'm tired. I'm tired. Are you tired? The dialogue in here was wasn't really fitting the high fantasy setting but in a way that kind of was intentional and worked so it had a lot more like modern phrasing and language and humor than I expected on the backdrop of this high fantasy setting. I also really enjoyed the inclusivity of this comic. We have a trans character in here and I really like the way that that was discussed within this comic and this setting and this world and despite myself I went into this expecting that I wasn't gonna like it and that definitely was apparent throughout the first like 50 pages of this but I actually ended up getting really sucked into the story. So so glad that I picked this up for the Unhaul project. This is one of the reasons why I do the Unhaul project as well because I know a lot of you guys will be like oh why don't you just unhaul all of these books if you're not interested in them because some of them like this turn out to be something that I really enjoy and instead of this going on the Unhaul pile unread I'm actually going to keep this now and also continue on with the series. So that is one of the reasons why we do this. You know the big reason is just so that I'm reading through things like the thrillers and random contemporaries that I'm vaguely interested in so that I can like keep making space on my shelves. So that is it for this month's Unhaul project. We have three books read and also my demonology requirements have been met for Magical Readathon. So we had one book that definitely like could have been unhauled unread. The thing is this is a fairy loot edition as well so I don't want to be unhauling a really nice special edition without at least giving it a try in case I do really love it and I've missed out on having like the fancy version of it. We had this one which is kind of like the definition of the unhaul project whereas I read it, I enjoyed it, not gonna keep it. And then we have this one which was the surprise and turned out to be something that I did really enjoy and I really want to continue on with the series. So for next week's vlog I'm going to be moving on to obviously more magical readathon prompts but the theme for next week's vlog is actually going to be romance which I'm really excited about because it has been a little while I think since I've done because a couple of the books that I'm reading are going to be contemporary romance so it's been a while since I've done a little bit of a romance cleanse and also one of the books that I'm going to be reading next week is very kinky so I'm interested to see what I think about that. But I do hope you guys have enjoyed this vlog if you've made it this far. If you have please don't forget to like if you liked it and subscribe if you want to and I'll see you guys next week. Bye! Oh you bite your friend like chocolate you say you will go where nobody knows With guns hidden under our petticoats We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no